Uh, good evening. Um, the time is 6.02 and uh, I'm Joel Hicks, Chair of the Climate Action Committee and I will call this February 16th Climate Action Committee Executive Climate Action Committee Executive Committee session to order. Um, first of all, I would like to, um, I have one regular action item uh, for, <clears throat> I move that the Executive Committee review and approve the November 17th, 2022 minutes. Is there a second? Seconded by Tamela Trussell. I, um, any comments? Hearing none, um, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. And the November 17, 2022 minutes are approved. Um, and now just, uh, I think we may have some folks perhaps on Zoom. There is nobody in Borough Hall, but I'd like to open it up for public comment. Thank you, Joyce. If, if somebody does come on um, and would like to um, address the committee, uh, please let me know and I will substitute where we are in the agenda for, for their um, input. Um, so I want to just dedicate most of uh, this evening to several uh, items from, have been worked on by different um, team leads. We, we have some um, <clears throat> really good good topics to bring up for consideration for council approval tonight. Uh, but before I do that, um, I, <clears throat> I did want to op open up uh, a discussion um, that has stimulated from some conversations I've had with staff and with the mayor. Um, basically looking at <clears throat> moving forward, how is the best way we can utilize this particular committee, um, perhaps to be more streamlined and be, uh, I would argue, maybe a little bit more collaborative and be able to work more in a uh, maybe working group environment. Um, I will just say sort of back, back when the committee was first formulated after it was a recommendation, right, from the Climate Action Plan that was approved by Council um, in January 2021, January 2021, um, that when the committee was formed, that we had multiple teams working across lots of different sort of demand and supply side aspects of <clears throat> mitigation. Um, I think the thinking was that we may have a little bit more public input, recurring public comment, and um, that's one of the things that sort of in, informed how we functioned up to this point is, you know, the, these are, every meeting every month is a public meeting, um, and uh, we, we really don't um, deliberate as a committee as a committee, as an executive committee, as, as sort of a um, working group, working level committee. Um, and, a, and a lot of the teams here, um, a lot of the team leads are working at different levels with um, their groups. Uh, but I'd say that's, that's working at, at different um, uh, levels of involvement, which is kind of a long way to say. I think moving forward, there was some interest between me and the mayor to focus more on individual projects, regardless of whether they were in the energy efficiency, transportation, or decarbonization area. Um, we've, we've never had anybody vol you know, volunteer to head the decarbonization task force, which you know, just may be an indication that we may be better utilizing our time to kind of focus on one or two projects um, that we think are priorities, sort of regardless of, of which which team that's on. So um, I'd like to get, just kind of open it up to uh, members here. Um, my thinking was we, we basically keep, we'd keep the same membership. We'd 
essentially dissolve the team structure um, in, in terms of um, uh, uh, of, of just reporting um, the status of what the teams are working on and decide internally where we want to sort of um, focus on a monthly basis on individual projects. Um, for the teams that, that have volunteers who are supporting them, I, I encourage you to continue to work for those teams. I think we can very much leverage uh, the, the work that you bring here. Um, but I think we, we can be more effective as a committee, uh, having a little bit more dialogue during our monthly sessions. Um, so, uh, for, for instance, David, I, I, you know, and um, Mitch, you know, you're, you're meeting fairly regularly with your teams, and, and I would encourage you to, to do so, but I also um, would, would like you to feel comfortable to sort of use this body to help you think through things um, if, if you find that useful. Um, and if not, that's fine. I'm not offended. I think we, there are some other projects we really need to start making some headway on. Um, and a lot of that's driven by some of the new legislation that's being written. Um, I think particularly, I think, uh, address, figuring out how we're going to address some of the initiatives that are focused on low income, uh, low and medium income households, particularly in the energy efficiency area. There's just um, uh, a whole tsunami of things coming down the pike that we need to be either working with our municipal and county partners or, or really um, uh, focusing the attention of um, what we may need our um, partners who are, who are contracting with staff to help, to help us, you know, obtain grants and, and devise programs that are going to be helpful um, in, in that area. So um, I think it'll allow us to be more agile. We, I would propose we meet um, at the same time every month. I think the deep, what I would suggest is that we default to it not being a public meeting until um, until such time as like tonight, we, we, we are deliberating a memo that we're, we're going to put forward to council. Um, and I think it would be appropriate during those months that, that we may potentially be voting on a, on a recommendation, like, like I believe we are tonight, um, that we would meet um, not, not in a public forum and, and probably in a different, different room. So I would like to, to get everyone's thoughts about that. Or, um, yeah. Is that a, a better plan? Uh, could, could we, should we consider maybe doing things a little differently than that? Yeah, go ahead, David. Joel, do you mean um, that we continue to meet once a month on third Thursdays, and but it's not a public meeting when there's nothing to enact and we instead talk about what we're doing and that sort of thing? You got it. Yeah. I like that idea. Much more elegantly and concisely than I thought. That, that's my intent. Um, just curious if... if I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Seems so? Okay. Good. Thanks, Mitch. Yeah. Everybody seems generally favorable. I, I, I think that's going to be better. And, and again, I... I um, you know, we've, we've probably been a committee long enough to get a sense of what the you know month to month interaction with the public is I, I think we still have those interactions you know pe people seem um, to, to be able to you know work email you know there are other forms besides a public meeting at, that we receive information so I'm not too worried if we sort of went into that sort of format that we we would be in danger of not not getting public comment so yeah, go ahead Mitch I do think it would be helpful if there was a sort of regularity to um, times we meet in public um, so that, you know, uh, you know, I don't think it has to be monthly, but, um, uh, and we can discuss that, 
you know, later, but I think that would help kind of if people are interested in it, um, in attending, and then it also sort of might kind of give us deadlines to get mm. things done. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I think we, we should consider, you know, anytime we do have a, uh, as tonight, as like tonight, we, we have a formal policy we're recommending, it seems appropriate that we would make that, that monthly meeting public, but maybe we, we maybe we could decide that, um, we at least meet quarterly. <laughs> so like, Maybe, maybe you know maybe the having a memo would meet that quarterly but um we, we could we could we could make the rule that we will at least have one quarterly public meeting and um it may be more often if we have more recommendations that we want that that sounds good okay. is that i like that idea sound good joel the the second memo the um the education memo I expect that program, if it succeeds, it's going to result in a lot of, of meetings with the public and mm -hmm. uh, similar to what Mitch has been doing for uh, what, half a year or so um, with these ideas as the, as the borough makes, uh, works toward making the streets safer for bicyclists and pedestrians, it's bound to include uh, multiple meetings with the public to explain yeah. and take take um, um, feedback I think that's that's a good point w one thing I, I'm not clear about you know when, when we do make a recommendation to council that for, for instance an important step in meeting our vehicle miles travel goal which is to make roadways more bike and pedestrian friendly um, to a certain extent, we're going to rely on council to determine who's going to be involved with that. And if they see that we are the best body to, to maybe suss out some of the more details, th that's fine. If they think hiring a contractor who works in this area is the, um, so we'll have to be agile, you know, and, and, and it may be variable in terms of what our follow on involvement will be after we make a recommendation but I think I think the examples of the things we are talking about tonight are actually really um, maybe more reflective of the sorts of at least near term things that I would expect coming from this committee it's, it's not recommending to council exactly how to do everything in detail but it is highlighting that these are in a these are essential steps to meeting the goals that you approved, and um, uh, it, it will be incumbent on, on staff and council to figure out the best the best solution for um, implementing that. So, um, it, unless you, unless uh, folks feel um, it deserves some more deliberation time, I will. I will move, I will make a motion that the committee uh, meets publicly uh, only at such times that we have a recommend, formal recommendation for council or um, at a minimum meets meets at least quarterly. Does anybody second that? Second. Seconded by Dave Sheridan. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Um, the motion passes. Um, we will continue to meet on the third month, third Thursday of every month at six. Um, and it, if it is a publicly advertised meeting, uh, Joyce will, um, uh, she uh, diligently does, will post it for uh, announcement um, at the designated time. Um, I, I will ask just logistically, would it be possible um, to get a conference room uh, it looks like it's generally open on a Thursday, but have us meet maybe in, in a round table rather than staring at the sides of each other's heads here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The, con the conference room right here would be great. So that'd be good. Um, great. 
thank you everybody for indulging that conversation. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on. Um, I think we'll, we'll, we'll turn it over to our transportation task force leads first. I, oh, I think those may be a, a little bit, um, take a little bit less time than the, the last item we have from Tamla, but um, in no particular, uh, I guess we'll, David, if you could sort of uh, uh, give an overview of, of your two memos, starting with the um, program that you are recommending to uh, <clears throat> develop a, an RFP system um, for encouraging EV charging station assistance first. Um, so, floor okay. is uh, first, I want to thank Jared for giving me the template. Um, uh, the the, uh, the the memo that we acted on a couple of uh, months ago was very helpful in terms of helping me understand. Um, I've talked in a very limited way with um, one particular um, uh, property owner, Caprice. Um, they, owned, they owned quite a bit of um, the um, property on High Street. And they're interested in the concept of, of um, putting in EV uh, charging stations on um, in their parking lots um, and um, their question is essentially what can the borough do to help us and and so I started with an RFP that uh, the concept of okay um, let's have property owners propose what they will do to I, I sort of ran into trouble there I wasn't quite sure what we were going to ask them to propose so I backed up to uh, two steps, the first one being an expression of interest uh, from property owners. So how, whatever the process is for the borough to publicize, the, the, the publication would be, um, are you interested in um, placing uh, EV charging uh, equipment on your property? And if you are, there's a meeting on this date and this time, something like that. And so they gather together in, in a room like this and uh, there's a presentation, questions, and through that, the borough de determines what the form of an RFP, a request for proposals, would be. Um, and, and then the request for proposals might be, how much help do you need? How much financial help do you need? How much technical help? Um, and then the, the borough could, and, and the borough in the RFP process would define the manner in which these proposals are going to be um, evaluated and scored and that sort of thing. And so that's that's the essence of, of the, the first memo, the January 9th memo. If, if I can interrupt you, there, uh, if any of you are familiar with this notice of intent for rulemaking in the federal system, mm -hmm. um, Every time an agency or department sort of is interested in doing a rulemaking or, or doing a potential grant program, they have a period of, of um, comment, a comment period, right? Um, some of them are triggered automatically, but in most cases, there is a there is a extended sort of reach reach out period. It sounds to me like what yes. th th this parallels very much what is done at different levels of government to help inform. A potential program, you know, that that um, could ideally sort of provide the most uh, beneficial assistance um, uh, at, at using, you know, the tools that the borough has available. Whether that's education, whether that's um, financial assistance, whether that's um, uh, uh, potential zoning or what have it, but having a period of time to do that. So um, it sounds like that's sort of consistent with what you had in mind here for that. That's great. Thanks. Did, did you have, um, what, were there any questions? Oh, did you did you want to? I'm done. Did you did you ha did you have a period of time that 
you you thought might be appropriate um, if it was in there I missed it but that this period of sort of public comment for developing potential program of assistance would last no I, I think the borough probably has um, a good bit of experience in public work certainly and, and in finance to uh, to to say what that time frame would be uh, as the the recommendation is that the um, the borough manager f have a relatively small group form um, I, I can volunteer that the transportation task force a transportation task force member could work with that group um, if the um, if the borough manager decides that that's a good idea um, but then um, how that evolves I think is probably pretty simple because the borough does it all the time for um, requests for materials request for professional services that sort of thing yeah um, Jared I, I just be curious because I'm, I'm sure in either here in your capacity somewhere you, you might have seen something like this at, at a local level um, any Anything about this that makes you think like the um, that, that would help staff or council um, improve the quality of a, of a potential RFP um, in terms of how much time it would take or how much outreach and to kind of set our expect. I guess what I'm looking for you is like to set our expectations for doing what I'm hearing um, the transportation task force trying to do. Uh, is the target for this uh, any property owner, owner in the borough or is this businesses? What's the target audience? Uh, we, we haven't set. Uh, so I, we, I don't we think just we're want EV position. charging stations for anybody in the borough that wants them and we want information uh, given to them implied is that that implied in our recommendation here is that the property owners would be of a mercantile sort um, and and that these um, EV stations would be open to um, to the public uh, could be a charge for it but they would they would not be restricted um, uh, that's that's implied but okay. but the point is I don't think the transportation task force we have one borough employee um, who's a member but I don't think the task force is really up to answering questions exactly like that okay um, so this this might be a good opportunity for the steering committee to kind of massage this a little bit I'm thinking yeah. of a, a, a couple of things so uh, the reason I ask about who the target audience is for something like this you want stakeholder participation and you want to do you know maybe some targeted outreach to get them to a public meeting because I think I heard you say mm -hmm. you want a public meeting to help them develop an RFP yeah is that okay which I haven't done before but it sounds interesting the them would be you would be staff them would be no that's not what I heard I heard that you want local people yeah. giving input on what would be in the RFP is that incorrect Correct. yes okay yes. so staff well, would set not that necessarily up. what's in the what would be in the RFP but okay um, what would make them um, more likely to decide yeah I'd like to be, install one of these things uh, and and maybe what's standing in the way is I don't have the slightest idea of how to get a permit or what do I do about PPNL? So this or, this doesn't sound like an RFP to me, but uh, maybe I'm getting my, you know, maybe there's I, a, a confusion and jargon. Uh, I've certainly uh, hosted and and attended public meetings where you're just soliciting input for a project, you know. But I wouldn't call it an RFP. It doesn't matter. We don't need to get caught up in the terms. What, what do you want? You, you want people to come out and give you some feedback. 
So I defining what the project is, I think, is uh, you know, I, I think it where, would be where this thing needs to shine. Really helpful to like have a focus group. Kind of, I mean, essentially, like where we could kind of try to get members of the business community downtown, and if we could also get some like organizations that install these things, um, some companies that install them to just sort of like, uh, and we could, you know, because I, 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 you know, I could go talk to people, but it's like, I don't know a thing about like installing a charging station, you know, so it's sort of this thing where there's like too many different areas of expertise. Um, and I feel like, you know, if we kind of like, I mean, um, kind of point out the, uh, you know, the installers are probably going to know about the, um, uh, the Pennsylvania, uh, driving forward. And then the, you know, it's sort of just, we kind of like, I think having like a place where we can all kind of meet and be like, Hey, are you interested in this? It, it kind of, um, you know, we, yeah, you know, we can, I, I'm, I'm fine going around like to businesses to like, let them know that, you know? So I, all, all I would say to that is it's uh, it's much more time consuming to go door to door to businesses yeah. and do that kind of outreach than it is to invite people to town hall yeah. to give their feedback. Yeah. So what I was suggesting before is sort of defining what we want that public meeting to look like and the okay. questions that we would ask stakeholders yeah. and then maybe try to pick some groups that we think would benefit from having that conversation. Okay. Yeah. You know, you know that makes sense. there's another planner in the room that knows about stakeholder outreach. Uh, what do you think, uh, Carla? Yeah. I was, I was confused by what we were asking for. Um, th and I do think that, you know, the questions are going to be, well, is this going to run off of my electric service or is it going to have its own service? And all those kind of questions are technical things that somebody from Volta or somebody would, you know, it would be nice to have somebody who could be So at the meeting, have technical experts. Okay. So I think that this actually needs two um, important considerations. Um, I think having it, using this as a way of educating, especially, I think, focused on commercial entities is important. Um, but, but I also think that um, it should be used to inform the expanse and the target of any potential further assistance, whether that's financial or technical assistance that we would, that the borough would consider um, creating based on that feedback. You know, is the, for instance, is what we're hearing that most of the assistance, which, you know, everything basically comes down to financial assistance, whether that's people's time or actually grants, whatever. But are we finding that th the biggest help we can give is to edu help people educate, help sort of accelerate getting um, permits? Is it offsetting the cost of the chart? We don't know, and we won't know until we meet. But um, there's benefit either way, because I, I think having... I've been here long enough, you know, I am not familiar of there ever being a public forum that says, hear ye, hear ye, if you're a commercial entity and you're you're thinking about installing a public charging station, we, we want to figure out a way to help you be more informed in making that decision. I think that would be valuable in and of itself. And then, um, you know, I think the steering committee, um, based on the inputs we're getting, um, can can formulate this you know this types of assistance that we could potentially provide our local um, i think jared to get back i think the two things i've heard is commercial businesses within the borough and the second important part is these chart like we're only going to consider assisting and charging stations that you make available to the public that's th those are sort of the, the those are the those are the rules of the game that that we think we we would we would want to 
have council consider using public funds for. Um, uh, so, yeah. Um, under m measures of impact, there's only one item. I wonder, um, I mean, if the hope is to gain more, you know, kind of knowledge, maybe some measure of impact would be Know, in, in information gathered at those public meetings, or maybe we host a public meeting, uh, something to that effect. Because this is, uh, you know, the success of the RFP is as measured as follows: we get additional locations. Uh, what I'm hearing is that we want more information. Not necessarily that we want them all over the place, but the first step is to find out what are the showstoppers, what's the level of interest in the community. Is that incorrect? Yeah. I, 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 would, I would never be interested as a council member in approving um, funding for a program where the measures are not part of, like, the, it would be conditional. If somebody was, in my mind, and I'm speaking only for myself, is anybody who's going to use public funds uh, I would hope that we would make some sort of report back or some sort of measure of effectiveness a part of that assistance. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful that those measures of effectiveness will be precisely what we determine them to be as a condition of, of funding. That's, that's, that's why I did not get too worried about not having a, a list yet. Um, I think that that would be an important learning experience, you know. Uh, perhaps we we start out by a, a more kind of a pilot part portion of this, where we're we're learning uh, before we roll out something potentially maybe bigger. Um, that's I, I can see that as a possible scenario. <laughs> This, this sounds very logical. It's it's really beyond the capability of the transportation task force to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if yeah. this can go to, and I think particularly the borough um, needs to take control of the suggestion and either move ahead with it or um, and, and shape it or decide that it's, it doesn't have merit. So I, I think that's the function of the, so we haven't done this at all. <laughs> While we started doing it with the municipal operations plan, right. it's almost there. The, in, in my mind, this starts with a, a recommendation, uh, which you've drafted, and then it goes to the steering committee. Okay. And the steering committee would give you that kind of feedback. It's got policymakers and staff uh, that would then deliver a um, their comments back to the Climate Action Committee. So as a draft, it's fine. And I'm gonna have another bite of the apple with the steering committee. I just wanted for the purposes of this public meeting to find out what, what you were really trying to get out of this. I, I wasn't trying to fix it tonight. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm not, to, not that I, I, I don't mean to imply that. It's, I'm no, sorry. I'm just yeah, saying, I, I don't mean we're not up to. It needs fixing, yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what is it, so what, what were you trying to convey yeah. to the steering committee before this goes to council? That's all I'm suggesting. I, uh, I have no qualms uh, about submitting this to the steering committee at, at, as is. Um, but does any anybody have anything substantially that they would have us consider adding or taking off of, of this? Okay. Um, I don't. <clears throat> I don't know how the steering committee functions, but um, is it, it? If it's reasonable, um, we, the trans transportation task force, would welcome an invitation to ask us for clarification. Um, okay. So. <laughs> We've only met a handful of times. I think the idea is that once the Climate Action Committee is happy with your draft, that it just goes to the steering committee, and then we return with any kind of like comment. It, it, it could, hypothetically, it could 
be um, a combination of inputs that they want, including from members of you, but it could, I could also um, see where we might want to bring in some other um, uh, folks to sort of shape how, how this goes forward and um, kind of see where our level, also to just to see kind of where our level of, of expertise is, because if we do decide to hold a, a public forum, we, we want it to be um, w well organized mm -hmm. and, and um, yeah, so um, I, th I think what, what this effectively does, and this is kind of the first go round for the committee to make a written, like, I, I think this does what one of the things I, we've intended this committee to do is, is to, it, it's priming the steering committee for, for some sort of action or response, um, and, and that could go multiple ways so um, and, and so with that I um, I, I will move uh, that we uh, approve the memo uh, to be forwarded to the steering committee um, climate action steering committee for their consideration is there a second a second seconded by Mr. Stiles um, any more further discussion uh, none heard of Call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. Um, the memo is approved for four to the Climate Action Steering Committee. Um, thank you, David. And you have one more uh, memo uh, you wanted to present to the committee. Um, yes, yeah, so the second memo is um, even more vague than the first, Jared. <laughs> but and, and purposefully because um, the the second. Um, first of all, as I've said for, in quite a few meetings, and as all of us uh, who ride bikes um, agree, uh, people are going to get on the, the street on a bicycle um, if they feel safe. And um, so this, this recommendation is that the borough um, proceed with a process that, that I've um, dubbed um, uh, educate um, um, uh, uh, interact and um, educate, engage, um, um, enact and, and um, enforce measures related to the borough's transportation infrastructure that would make the, um, the infrastructure safer for both uh, bicyclists and pedestrians. And um, the I've had a, a, a little bit of conversation um, with the borough manager about this, and and she has stressed that this this has to be a borough process, not the transportation task force, um, um, saying what it would like. The list that I've added here, to, and this is the list, is uh, just a record of the um, uh, of the of the our meeting, um, and. Um, Joel, you can decide how to use that because I didn't want to put it in the um, recommendation. The recommendation is to to move ahead with a process that would begin by, let's say, um, first of all, educating the um, public. The, the yes, educating the public in terms of what a vehicle mile traveled is what the borough's commitment is in uh, what the borough's um, uh, uh, objective is in the Climate Action Committee and how um, getting um, drivers, some drivers, to do short trips uh, on bicycle or, or um, by walking, but I think the aim is mostly bicycle, to reduce those short trips that um, might be done in a car but could be done on a bicycle if um, if the bicyclist feels safer and then the next step might be and so perhaps there's a uh, a, a short uh, uh, um, term of um, videos postings on the on the borough's um, 
um, social media sites and, and such that explains what a VMT is and, and the borough is going to be working towards safer streets and there are um, quite a few um, uh, organizations and programs that um, the, the borough might cite in this, um, this preamble. And then after that, I, we're, the task force is envisioning that um, maybe the task force or maybe a, 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 a group that is established by the borough would begin to say, um, okay, um, you know, what's, what's the first thing that, what's the first measure that the borough wants to tackle in the way of, of improving the um, um, safety on the streets? And so maybe it's lowering the, ta the you know, these 10 things. And, and the 10 things are kind of, they're, they're from easiest to most difficult, kind of. There, they, we did brainstorming, and, and um, um, they're, they're probably um, half of them are pretty simple, and then the other half are probably um, um, increasingly difficult, like number 10, you know, taking the lane away and, uh, on the two ways, like, um, you know, that's it. Uh, it's it's a separate um, separate document that Joel distributed. It was on the. I, I, I did. Which oh. Okay. 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 I'm going to read them. Designate boroughs, signalize intersections at which sight distance constraints would require drivers to enter. Pressure. Well, that's not a Consider reducing speed limit on borough streets of 20 miles an hour. Consider traffic calming measures in borough alleys. Enact Idaho stop for bicyclists. Number five, expand designated bicycle routes. Number six, install bicycle parking at various des destination locations. Number seven, improve bicycle lane markings on Hanover and High Street. Eight, implement safe routes to school program. Nine, consider pedestrian and bicycle safety measures for all street maintenance or improvement projects. And 10, redesign selected streets to provide protected bicycle lanes. Projects might include changing certain two-way streets to one-way and consider parking um, separated bike lanes. Um, I will make sure everybody has that list. Um, I will, I'll just, I mean, is that list a sort of a consensus List oh, yeah. that you all went through. okay and and, and we, we, it's safe to say the, these were um, you know of all the recommendations we can make the, these these were the top ten that we would encourage the borough to undertake to meet our VMT requirements. we had eleven and we cut one out the the the, uh, the eleventh was um, um, signing the alleys with um, uh, speed limits and. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, Rick and Jeff both said, well, you know, the alleys, um, the, there's no, nothing past the easement. So where do you post the signs? Yeah. And that, that is a difficult thing. So we, we agreed on um, uh, the, the alleys, um, what is it called? Uh, traffic calming measures in Vernal Alley. And actually, some of the alleys um, have do have um, speed bumps, the ones that uh, between uh, Bedford and East, uh, that alley has speed bumps because of the um, traffic on them. Um, I, um, I should have been more specific. So it sounds like those are the 10 measures involving improving the safety of pedestrian bicyclists, not in terms of the overall efficacy of projects that would reduce vehicle miles traveled, correct? So this is sort of sub sub elements of one that is unique. If, if one accepts that vehicle miles traveled can be reduced if people feel safe right. riding or, or walking. And some of them are intersecting, right? If you, if you expand designated bicycle routes, people are going to feel safer, which means more people are going to ride, but it also promotes, you, you have more options um, to do short, 
the distant errands and, and it encourages people to do that, not because of safety, but because we have more accessible routes to, to do errands. So some of these, I, I think, intersect with safety with, with other things. I will say one of the, you know, the group that um, um, Jared is starting to look um, at land use subcommittee um, probably um, is thinking about some of these already. My question for Jared would be, I mean, in terms of what the recommendation on this memo says, particularly at the continuing stages part, um, is that too broad um, at this point that that would the steering committee might not know what is being asked for? That's my only concern. Um, I mean, the, in, in the interest of keeping this moving, I, I would send it. You know, I, I've heard enough where I think I understand what's going on. I'd include that. Okay. The follow the continuing. Oh, the, yeah. But um, you know, my sense of things, and again, I, I get, I get the. I get to play with this a bunch of times, you know, with the steering committee, the climate action committee, and then when it advances the borough council, I'll be there for technical support. So I get to watch this, you know, through, through uh, as it uh, goes through the process. But, you know, the problem definition, um, if we could go back to the last statement you just made, Dave, and I think you, you pretty much laid it out, uh, that your strategy for reducing vehicle miles traveled is to make it, you know, safer and more accessible for bicycles and pedestrians. So your problem definition, just to flip it, is that, you know, some places in the borough are inaccessible or unsafe for uh, cyclists and pedestrians. And then you just sort of uh, go, go through this, you know, uh, with that idea that there's a problem and we seek to address it, you know, uh, in, in these ways. Um, those strategies that you read off, in different contexts, they might work, and others they won't. Um, which is the need for a transportation plan, which is just like this pretty huge undertaking. But um, I mean, again, you got to start somewhere. So advancing some recommendation to council was not a bad idea. Uh, at maybe three council meetings ago, uh, council asked me ab about bike fed planning, so there was some interest. So again, if you tie it back to climate action plan, if that's the strategy that you want to take to reduce vehicle miles traveled by making this the, the borough more accessible and safer for bike ped use, then I think that's a fine place to start. I heard a lot of bicycle improvements and not a whole lot of specific pedestrian stuff. And when you think about the ratio of bicyclists versus the ratio of people that walk, the, the first one is actually probably the, the and that is, uh, I didn't realize that um, this hadn't been distributed. It really pisses me off when um, drivers pull into um, crosswalks in order to make a right turn on red. And there are many intersections in the borough that there's no sight distance and the only way to make a safe t right turn on red is to be in the, tr in the crosswalk. And so that that is definitely a pedestrian issue. Um, yeah. Sorry that this didn't get distributed. Okay. But it's okay. even even you know as you walk down the street and the sidewalk is uneven, or you know there's a great mess in there, well, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, that yeah. I think is important, especially for older folks mm -hmm. and people that maybe don't see very well. I, I mean, some of that safety of walking is why I don't want to twist my ankle getting three blocks. From so. I, I, I agree with that 100%, Carla. My, my, both my mother and my mother-in-law have balance issues, right. and like um, they find the sidewalks in Carlisle treacherous. And so, it, I mean, I, I don't know how, to me, it's sort of this thing, like, how do you address that with the trees sort of like pushing up the blocks, too? So it's because it's, we want the tree cover, too, for the... Um, <laughs> for the... Uh, to, to prevent the heat, heat island effects so it's sort of this, you know, I, I don't know, maybe there's some novel solutions I don't know, uh, Carla that you might suggest or well, you know, what York, or City of York does is when they start to heave up they just come through with a saw okay, just plane it down <laughs> I mean, it fixes it for a couple of years yeah 
in um, our neighborhood, that's what they're doing. They went and painted a bunch, and then the saw has just come. But one, they've missed a lot of areas, and two, they haven't sawed them enough to where it would, would be safe for someone with a walker or issues. And I do see a lot of people um, who are elderly actually walking in the street because the sidewalks aren't safe. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to um, ask and mention. It definitely specifically mentions bikes and pedestrians, but not other non-motor vehicle modes of transportation. And um, I was just in Miami and California, and I know even here in Carlisle, I see lots of other modes of transportation, whether it's a skateboard, roller skates, e-bikes, e-scooters, etc. So that's something to be looked at. I, I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up because it, it's a great preamble to what I was going to, you know, I, this is a good problem definition. I, I, I would encourage your team to continue to view additional BMT oriented problem definitions because for reasons Tamara just brought, like I, I could rattle out probably three or four other things, um, you know, teleworking. You know, so there, there's there's a lot of other ways we can. Um, the bur the borough's involvement may vary, but there's a lot of other avenues. I'm hoping that your team will, will look at. I think this one um, may may be the most important and imperative. Um, but to continue to look at uh, no the. <laughs> The whole area of multimodal transportation and how that will affect um, people's willingness to get out of their vehicles is is really really important and quite dynamic. So, I think this is a great start on the VMT front. But please, um, you know, I would encourage you to, to look at other very um, kind of distinct areas that I think all have to come together um, to kind of maximize our ability to encourage people to, to make more trips out of their car. I mean, that's, that's, that's the, what we're trying to do with this. And, um, so thank you for that, Tamil. I, that, that was, um, did, so it sounds like Jared, um, you don't have concerns how the steering committee will handle this so okay. uh, not, no not particularly i mean the focus on bike ped use i mean we could maybe refine that or, or i don't know <laughs> you could say active transport alternative forms of transportation something like that like a full-on transportation plan where you consider all modes is like a, a much bigger deal but if we're just yeah. trying to get it bike ped use you know skateboarders uh, e-bikes uh micro transit that kind of thing um, I, I still think you could get at it with this by sending it to the steering committee and bouncing it back. Maybe with that added kind of detail that we're not just looking at walkers and cyclists. Yeah, well, well I think this does focus, uh, our focus in, in the task force in, in uh, developing this recommendation is bicyclists and, and pedestrians. Um, other things that we've chatted about over the months have been jitney service and things like that, which is a VMT reduction um, um, <laughs> circulator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> um, it, you know, um, better, um, better public transit. Mm -hmm. um, but um, those, those but are th other th Those seem like other things to, to focus on, like even microtransit to me. So might need its own kind of planning process, uh, depending on how, how it gets uh, implemented. Uh, the, the way this is written, though, um, it's, it's clear about what the near-term priority is. It's educate and inform, like coming up with some sort of educate, engage, and act in force. And I think that is where it starts. I think that's where uh, the borough would agree. I think that's probably what council would agree is like we, we uh, that needs to be kind of front and center before. We, so, um, so it doesn't compel, it doesn't, 
doesn't suggest they need, um, you know, that's a continuing stage, actually. The near-term thing that we're really saying is let's, let's think about educating the problem first and, and thinking about how we... Um, Does the borough have, um, like, illuminated, illuminated matrix signs? at all like do we have any of those like the kind of like you know road work signs like ahead or that are programmable well we, we obviously have the lighted crosswalks but those tend to be servicing more of the dickinson college area no, I mean, and then like like you know like expect delays kind of thing oh. like one of those like big it's like a big you know it's a trailer with a orange box and a sign that pops up and you can kind of because uh, when I lived in Boston, like that, those were everywhere, and they were, you know, they'd always have reminders on them, of, like you know, use the Dutch reach so you don't, you know, door cyclist or you know, buckle up, uh, like DUI enforced, like reminders, things like that. Um, yeah. You know, it's kind of like it's really convenient to get drivers like when they're driving, because <laughs> it's like um, it's hard to kind of reach out. We can, we, you know, we could reach out to the borough. Um, through the Gazette or something like that, but um, you know, there's also a lot of people that drive into Carlisle that don't get that, you know, and there's kind of, it's really hard to reach them but, you know, they do drive through the borough and so, you know, we can kind of at least get to them that way. Um, well, the the point here is is the education point is that making the streets safer is going to inconvenience vehicle drivers. And so um, education precedes enactment. Uh, you know, you don't just spring a no turn on red sign on, you know, Weston High. Um, you have to, uh, I'm, I think um, the borough has to um, spend some time trying to reach vehicle drivers to say why um, there uh, no turn on red uh, signs are going to go up on, on uh, Western High. And of course, um, the borough has to ask PennDOT to do that anyway. So yeah. it, it, there's a lot of process to it. I think, but drivers, it, maybe they won't be so angry as like they were for the road diet. You know, they were fit to be tied. And the road diet turns out to be not too bad. And so this, this no turn on red, it would perhaps the education process would include a video of children crossing the, the um, or children being blocked by a car in the uh, crosswalk uh, that's that's out there trying to make a, a safe right turn on red, um, you know, something like that. And then maybe that will make drivers say, oh, okay, I understand that. Have, um, I guess, you know, I, I, I think, we, we kind of mentioned the, the MTAs. I, I, I get the sense that, like, you know, safety on the streets really resonates with most people, maybe not everyone. Um, I'm not sure if, like, VM, like reducing BMTs is something that, like, people would be... But I think it sort of, like, happens automatically just by emphasizing the safety um, aspect. I, I am kind of curious, has the borough, like, um, looked at, uh, I guess, ha like... I don't know, just presented sort of statistics about, um, you know, crash rates to people or for, you know, like, you know, the percentage of children that are hit in Pennsylvania by cars, you know, every year. I mean, I, yeah, th I'm not aware that we have. And, okay. um, I don't, I'm a little bit, Larry, sometimes in areas where people are afraid to walk, the numbers are pretty low because yeah. people don't get hit because they're afraid to go out. So, um, so sometimes you just have to be a little, you know, if you looked at the number, so somebody might come to me and show that, hey, um, in many areas of Pennsylvania, you know, pedestrians are, are actually hit at a very low rate. And I, I think you got to be careful with those statistics because <laughs> If people aren't walking, you're not going to get hit. And we actually want to encourage more 
no, I, 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 I agree. So. But I think I think to sort of emphasize to drivers, sort of the, um, I think there are, there are ways to sort of show that to people outside of like driving um, that um, can really kind of give people little, pause. I might hop in a little bit on just some of this because I've done some, we've done some outreach. I went with the police when they were doing their crosswalk. They were targeting both drivers and, and pedestrians is the mindset of a lot of people is that pedestrians are the pro so we've got to switch that. that yeah. And it's very, it's just, we're very, it's a very car centered community, despite being as walkable as that, at least the public feedback we get is that it's, yeah, so that's kind of something to think about how we can t twist that narrative around. It's education for everybody. Yeah. Not, not yeah. just drivers. And that's what I think the police did right, was they weren't just stopping drivers. If they saw someone walk across where they didn't have the signal, they would let them know, hey, you know, you got to wait for the signal, do this. So I think it can go both ways, but there is a tendency to want to put the onus on the pedestrian when that's not always the right. I don't necessarily agree with that, but that's sort of how people view it. So that's another hurdle. We'll have to figure out the best way to approach. And, and that's, yeah, that's not yet yeah. for really? us to decide or been asked for us to decide here. So um, in the interest of time, um, good, good discussion. Um, it, it sounds like two of us on the steering committee are not um, have any issues dealing with this at this in this form so I will um, make a motion that we approve uh, the submission of this memo to the steering committee um, as written um, is there a second second seconded by Jerry Wilston uh, any further discussion uh, are you intending to put a list of potential measures I will add the list of 10 um, measures that complement this specific yes okay. um, pedestrian and bicycle um, safety uh, as part of this memo um, and with that caveat is there any further discussion if not uh, I'll call the question all those in favor uh, say aye. Aye. aye all those opposed uh, the motion um, is approved for consideration to the steering committee. Thank you for you and your team's work, David. Uh, and uh, last, um, we're gonna, um, uh, it's an issue we've, we've been um, deliberating for a, a little while here, but um, I think we have some important updates um, that I'll turn it over to Tamala, trust on the um, single use plastic bag recommendation. Over to you, Tamala. I just want to draw your attention to where I did make some changes. It would be the third paragraph under benefits. And then a table was added. So if you um, haven't had a chance to notice that, that's where changes were made on the summary from earlier. Are you waiting for any, any comment or did you? Yes, want to any comments. Did, can we can we put those updates up here on the board? The change the changes that you wanted added. She, is it in the document? It was in the. Yeah, it's it, yes, Joyce? it's on the strategic uh, plan recommendation. I don't know. I also thought you sent a copy a to Joyce. This, uh, yeah. It's on. I have the slideshow. Okay. So, yeah. I, I sent a copy to Joyce and I thought everyone was CC'd on it. If you can throw it that forward, Joyce, if you want to use that, I can do that. Do you not need the PowerPoint? I do. You do? Okay. Which first, then? The, the document? <laughs> Joel would like the document. Although since you have this up, we could just deal with this and then get, 
because actually this does relate to what changes I made. So that actually makes sense. Let's just go with the PowerPoint first. That way. <clears throat> um, so it seems like consensus has been made that direct tie for decreasing um, greenhouse gas emissions with plastic bag reduction uh, ordinance is not going to be significant. Um, uh, if you looked at scope three things and like that, it would. So um, I just want to share with you these couple of slides to just let you know and let you feel comfortable though with the fact that even though it's hard for us as a Carlisle community to get quantitative data on that value, um, because you guys are Climate Action Commission addressing greenhouse gas emissions, um, I just wanted to help show you some information that would make you feel confident that there is a connection here. So um, if you look at the pie graph to your left, the um, oil demand use is 14%, which is the second biggest slice of um, what oil is used for. And that is going to make plastic. Otherwise you'll hear it labeled as petrochemical. Uh, so that's pretty significant, second to transportation. And then for gas, um, it's still pretty high in use, but because Pennsylvania is, um, I believe, the second state with the most frack wells, the um, plastic or petrochemicals um, are used, uh, the ethane gas, to make them. And so that's a good connection. You can go to the next slide. Um, this is just showing you how by uh, petrochemicals, these are some slides um, that I just went to a webinar yesterday <laughs> and I'm doing three presentations right now. So forgive me for this not being very fluid, but um, the petrochemical and plastic production will account for over a third of the oil demand by um, 20, that says 2020 and half by 2050. You can go. And then this is showing you um, the final energy demand and direct CO2 emissions by sector. And as you can see, petrochemicals is by far the highest. Um, and then this is just showing you uh, the production kind of worldwide. And as I was mentioning before, the U.S. is leading in ethane chemical production for the uh, production of plastic. And there are a few more other slides, um, but we have passed the planetary boundary for safety for what they call novel uh, entities, which is petrochemicals and a couple other th things that's related to plastics. And this is the 22 version of that other chart. Um, and so it's even more, um, what's the word I wanna use? Uh, like you can see where the climate change is at, and then look at the novel entities. So as much as urgent as climate change is, novel entities is way surpassed, <laughs> and it directly does tie into climate change. Okay. Um, and the worst offenders for plastic pollution are the things and the items that we are seeing around us. And so a, a bag reduction, yes, we're dealing, you think you were dealing with just bags, but we're dealing with changing ways of thought and lifestyle and 
it's the beginning of changing public policy, not only at the municipal level, but the state and the federal level, and um, getting these companies to change. So one thing that I'm hearing a lot is um, that like Walmart starting to put in its own bag reductions. I don't know if you guys were aware of that in certain states, because the states where municipalities are coming out with bag reduction ordinances, they're tired of meeting each little individual <laughs> ordinance. So it's we're changing as municipalities what the industry does. And so that's really important. Um, also, the impact, it definitely, bags are everywhere. I have so many pictures, and it's so disheartening, but you can see that um, in cleaning up just litter, it is, uh, you know, expensive. And um, so I do hope and uh, that it will also bring down the cost for residents if we you know the MRF gets less entanglements from the bags so they have less downtime they're not paying for equipment you know um uh to be fixed and time down maybe that savings gets passed on to the borough and therefore to the residents uh so that kind of helps address the expense. <laughs> and then, of course, petrochemicals are, um, with through fracking, immense amount of methane, uh, greenhouse gas um, is being emitted. So if we can bring down uh, that um, gas, that'd be great too. And you can just stop there. <laughs> okay, great. Why does that make me sound funny? Maybe it's the reverb. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah, so if you just want to go to benefits um, mm -hmm. in the third paragraph, yeah, keep going down. Yep, keep going. There. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so it starts with we will have less litter. And so um, I can't remember exactly for sure, but I believe that I added the sentences. Hold on, I have to re get my eyes there. Um, we're kind of in the middle of that paragraph about plastic waste will drastically impact our ocean's ability to uh, be a carbon sink. And so um, that's something that's uh, very important as well. Um, and then yes, it is kind of an aside, um, but yeah. And then uh, plastics are shown to release greenhouse gases and ethane and methane as they decompose, that's important. I know one uh, update since the last version of this was your coordination with the community engagement team. So yeah, yeah I definitely so wanted that, you to, yeah. if you I think mo for most of us yep. who've um, been keeping score on this, this this is fairly familiar with us. I, yep. I did want to spend some time to make sure to highlight that we... The chart, uh, if you want to just go to the end of the chart. Is. Yeah, that we could um, showcase yep. that, that of the criteria we approved a year ago in terms of what we would be considering in terms of recommendations that um, that process happened. So I'll turn that out either to Mitch or you to, to describe. Uh, yeah, so um, Mitch came up with uh, these criteria um, for the community engagement and uh, we worked to put like a value of um, importance and impact. And so that is basically what we came up with. And you can look at it and let me know what you think. <laughs> Comments, Mitch? I, 
Yeah, I, I will just say that the thing that caught my eye that I think is the most um, significant to, for the count, you know, for council to be aware of is that you know the initial response will, will be a little bit of discomfort in, in basically yeah. what we're asking people to do is change their behavior, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and um, I, I think the recommendation we're ma making is providing as much of a buffer against what will happen in terms of the timeline before it's enforced and then, you know, mm -hmm. a whole period of education, information. Yeah. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, when, you know, ordinance gets written and deployed, you know, there, there will be some discomfort and, you know, that we have some measures in place um, to work with um, individuals. Um, we, sh we should have those thoughtfully um, considered but um, I don't know Mitch did, did you want to add anything to this or um, no I think um, you know just making sure that there's sort of uh, adequate time for people to prepare for it you know because you, you know we can kind of I think it's it's easier to work with places like Walmart and, and um, giant on this but I think more the like local um, uh, you know smaller smaller businesses I think is sort of like it's really critical that um, you know, they, they have time to like and know this is coming well in advance that's mm -hmm. sort of the, the big, biggest thing so that they have time to you know purchase you know I mean they may be they may have a huge stock of plastic bags that they're like you know oh no like what like they, they need to like order paper bags um, Well, thank, you, know, I, thank I, you for for going through that. I had made process. a suggestion that you know mm -hmm. maybe the borough could get bags in bulk. There is a big difference when you're ordering above five thousand and even ten thousand. Like the price almost drops in half, and so for our local stores, it'd be easier for the borough to purchase, and then they can purchase them off of us. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, we'll, we'll potentially see if the steering committee or council wants um, us to go into those sort of secondary recommendations later. But um, there's a certain <laughs> there's a certain cutoff of which you know a, a program needs to to move forward, and I think we've hit that. It is important for me to say a couple of things. Is is one I, um, although I fully support moving this forward, um, I've always been a little bit hesitant in the sense that you know that the main motivating factor factor for the formation of this committee is reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and this would not be in my top ten list of things that I would um, put forward as, as a as a forum mitigation. Um, Having said that, I, I, you know, I can confidently say, um, e even though the way we do our consumption-based greenhouse mm -hmm. gas inventory, these emissions are not captured. Uh, reducing the use of single-use plastics would reduce our scope three emissions um, if we were collecting them. So I, I, I do. That is fundamentally why I am comfortable forwarding this to. To council now, there is research to debate what um, the effect of how people re reuse replacements, um, possibility of using more heavily lined things where they were using the single-use plat. There's, there's there's a bit of conflicting research about what the mm -hmm. net reductions are, but I will say, unless we eliminate single-use plastics, we're, we're not going to meet our emission standards. So um, it may take us a little bit longer to figure out the best system of replacements to get people to use less 
greenhouse gas intensive bags for longer to have businesses minimize um, you know how, how they package things and those sorts of things but you know there is a pathway where this is certainly a, a benefit in you know our global need to reduce emissions um, and, and the last thing I really want to reiterate is on this isn't this isn't a ban on having single-use plastics this is a right. this is a recommendation to ban this the, the resale of single-use plastics um, uh, so you know it, you know people uh, people are using single-use plastics you know in town that that is not there's nothing wrong with it. we just don't want to be contributing new ones through the sale of products in our businesses um, and and this is one way we can reduce the total number circulating in, in town so um, any anybody have any uh, since, since you know this is this is a fairly significant proposal we're moving forward and, but and we have dedicated significant time already here. I think the main thing um, I had requested from Tamala was to make sure um, we had a confident endorsement from the community engagement team that based on their criteria, they could support the recommendation we were making to council. So um, I think we have something I'm comfortable with and um, I, really want to thank Tamala for all the work you've done on this for the work you're doing m much more broadly on the dangers of plastics in our environment um, this is only one of dozens of, of items you're working on but um, you worked very diligently you have really helped shaped um, the considerations um, and discussion I really appreciate all the work you and your patients on this but um, with that I I would um, move that we submit this recommendation for uh, a 12 cent um, fee and a, a ban on single use plastics with a 12 cent fee for an alternative um, approved uh, bag um, is there a second I second. That's been seconded by Tamela Trussell. Any further discussion? Is this going to the steering committee yes. first? Okay. Um, I guess for, for discussion purposes, um, I wasn't sure how this would be enforced. Um, that definitely will be a topic of discussion at the steering committee level. A lot of times the code enforcement staff get tasked with that. Um, I'm not sure if I have the capacity for it. So the scale of this gives me pause. Um, the cost, um, Mitch mentioned before, um, you know, how this might affect businesses differently. I think that's an excellent point, and that will certainly come up at the steering committee level. I'm, I'm not sure that we've had an audience uh, with local business owners that's substantive enough to advance this to council yet. Um, that, that's just my sense of things. Um, I, I think it's, uh, you, you sort of hit the nail on the head, Mitch. Uh, the franchise businesses have the deeper pockets to deal with this kind of change. Um, and I'm not convinced that the local businesses do. So I'd want to hear from them a little bit more before at least at the staff level, I, I felt like ethically I could, you know, make this kind of recommendation. Also the, um, the towns that have adopted this in Pennsylvania seem to be at the bookends of Pennsylvania, you know, sort of in the bigger metros. And that again, talking about the local markets and economies, I, I sort of wonder about that. Like, why hasn't this been widely adopted throughout Pennsylvania? It only seems to be around Pittsburgh and Pencil and, and, and Philadelphia. Um, uh, the the timing for this, um, again, I think ought to be discussed um, a, a little bit more um, in, in detail in terms of. Is there an opportunity for a local business to, you know, declare an unreasonable hardship, and what does that look like? You know, 
is there a way to be exempt or is this just you know a, a fee across the board and and just sort of you know the expectation is that it, it is what it is so I, I, again I, i'm not going to vote uh, uh, against sending it to the steering committee but in full transparency those are some of my uh, at least thoughts initial thoughts um i I know for a few years now, like Sally Beauty Supply that's here at Carlisle, when you go to check out, they ask if you would like to, you know, pay for a bag and it's 15 a cents. So businesses, you know, could do that. I'm, I'm convinced we're doing, we, we have done as much as we can in a committee with zero budget. And, um, you know, we, we, we have, um, you know, we, we, we have done, I think, enough outreach with a combination of student surveys and, 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 and some other um, work that students at Widener and Dickinson have done to at least make us believe this is feasible. Uh, we, you know, we, ha we, we can show work where we have reached out to a subset of businesses, um, I, I think a, a fairly good mix of businesses, and, and there's not, you know, um, there are differences of opinion, as you might expect, uh, and, and you're going to see that when you reach out, you know, locally too. Uh, but we didn't, nothing jumped out at us to say this is, this is not going to work here which is basically um what what we were concerned about and, and that hasn't happened yet now you might find in your deliberations that you found something out that we we didn't over the last two year two plus years that we've kind of been using the works of our colleges and universities to, to make sure we're not going to get blindsided like we're not looking at something we should have but yep there's 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 some, even in the data we have there you know there, there are differences of opinion there are some businesses who think this is great there's some businesses who have some real concerns um, but I think we're I'm at a point where um, there's no reason to believe that the uh, the program we would be best served by having a program like that and and, and the of all the alternatives out there, I, I I feel very very comfortable that that a ban plus a fee is as much research as is out there is the most effective way at the end of the day to reduce the number of bags circulating, um, and um, I, that's why I'm I'm comfortable. So we do have a thank you, Jared. Um, we. Have a motion uh, first and second any, any other discussion um hearing none i'll call the question all those in favor of forwarding this to the steering committee say aye 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 all those opposed um the motion passes uh we will forward this third and final um uh, memo to the steering committee thank you again Pamela, for your work on this um and maybe in the interest of time by exception uh, since it is 7 30 i will uh invite le team leaders only at their discretion if, if they want to address anything uh i have the group i missed yeah, go for it. i'd like to um i'll kind of just skip the updates on what we're doing but um i guess um we're, we're just sort of at the moment we're using up our uh, grant money from CCLA, so we've been a little bit busy with that before we can move on to other things. Um, I guess um, one of the things I'm um, curious is, ha has there been any sort of like um, look at historical crashes in Carlisle um, with between pedestrians and cyclists and or and or comparison between Carlisle and other municipalities? Like, has that occurred at all? I'm looking at like crashes or just curious yeah um I, I know we have the crash data for okay. bike peds uh okay. but i don't know that we've compared it with other localities okay um 
and then I guess um, Um, I guess one one of the things I, got, I was hoping to kind of we could discuss, but you know maybe this should just be a separate meeting um, with um, maybe David and, and Jared um, is like thinking about uh, you had mentioned sort of a, tr a broader transportation plan. Um, I know that like Harrisburg is implementing Vision Zero along with several of other larger municipalities around the state, and I, I guess I'm kind of curious. Um, I think that like the marketing around that, like the like or not necessarily. I don't want to say marketing. Marketing is not the right word, but the sort of um, kind of like pre-prepared information around that is, I think, really um, compelling and you know um, a good way to kind of get people on board with um, changes to uh, transportation infrastructure. And I, I guess I'm kind of curious, like, what if you know. Maybe we could have a discussion on like thoughts on that. Um, you know what maybe like a lighter version of that would look like for the borough. I mean, I feel like it's a lot of the things we're trying to do kind of already kind of fall into that realm. Um, yeah, um, I don't know if you have any quick thoughts or. Uh, uh, I I know about the Vision Zero program. Uh, you know, I, ITE is all over that. Um, it, what are ITEs, sir? <laughs> it's it's a, you don't a have to. group of nerds interested in transportation engineering, but okay. um, uh, <clears throat> um, and, and I say that affectionately because I, I think they're doing interesting things. Okay. Uh, the Vision Zero seems like kind of an uh, idealist approach okay. um, to a, a big problem, which is you know pedestrian and, and bike fatalities uh, and just collisions with motorists. I, I mean it's a it's a big problem. So it's raising some interest. I think there's some money behind it. But, uh, you know, if the borough wanted to get into, you know, some better planning for, you know, bike bed safety and access, as was suggested with this memo, I think we'd be advancing the same kind of things yeah. that, that Vision Zero hopes to achieve. And it might be a more practical Carlisle focused approach. I'm looking through my notes from um, that there there is at least one other um, program that focuses on um, not vision zero it's um, streets safe streets for all or something like there's a four in the um, yep. and that um, and, and by the way, my my reference to um, safe safe routes to school, I mm -hmm. think that's yeah. a that's an actual program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and the reason it's on our list is that it would be it'd be a good um, advertisement. Yeah. Um, who doesn't who could disagree with with kids having a safe um, route to school? So you know, it might be part of the education program along with you know um, to to help drivers to understand why these measures are being taken. So is it, is, is it um, more that it's just sort of like a massive undertaking? Is that sort of maybe? A, a transportation plan where you look yeah. at all modes and yeah, yeah that's humongous. Uh, you know, just uh, at, at my last job, just doing a bike ped plan took me almost two years you know, because it was me and a couple interns. Mm -hmm. uh, so looking at all, all modes of transportation through the borough, although it's five square miles and my last town is quite a bit bigger, Yeah, I, th I think it would be huge. Yeah. Not that it's not worth considering. It's just a bigger pursuit. Got well, it. what is the program that um, the um, Tri-County, uh, the um, Metropolitan Planning Organization is doing that we're... I think it's the HATS program. The HATS, H-A-T-S. And, and that focuses on, basically on safe streets, right? And um, I, I can get you some information on it, sure. Yeah. Good. We sent a letter rec recommendation for that. For sa uh, safe streets for all? Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of the money behind this as far as I can tell, Vision Zero, uh, at least part of the money. I mean, the, 
did, a lot did of they get a response there. for their proposal? Do you know what um, happened with that? I, I know they submitted it on time. I don't know if they got a response back. Okay. Hmm. All right. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, so, inbox just got a little bit more full for the steering committee. Uh, so, uh, good work. And um, we will probably be meeting uh, in a conference room next month. And I will um, identify probably two or three focus areas I'd um, like everyone to think about. And maybe I may be asked for your input on areas outside of your your teams or your expertise, but it'll be much more collaborative next week. So um, this meeting's adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>